Hello, avid readers, book nerds, and casual observers. Welcome to the Read Along, brought to you by the Lit Round Table. I'm Joseph. And I'm Anna, and this is our read along of A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy Eileen. Week five. It's week five. We're talking about chapters 25 through 31 today. Of A Magic Steeped in Poison? Yes. In case you, you know, if you were weren't listening book. to the first. Five seconds of the podcast, where we say that. <laughs> um, oh, right. It's in the intro. <laughs> it's in the intro. We record that beforehand, so like, it's, don't Are don't you at letting me. them behind the curtain? <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention to the, to the editing man behind the curtain. Um, before we get into our main episode, though, today, you guys, after this week, there's only two weeks left of this book. We are almost done. Which means, shameless plug for our Patreon here, if you want to vote for our next read-along book, um, you got to be a member of our Patreon to do so. Um, mm-hmm. And Joseph is making the selection of the four, three or four books you can pick from, depending on how many he came up with. But Joseph, tell us what our picks are for this time. So, for this time, there are some that are repeats oh okay <laughs> because i want to do them eventually <laughs> okay okay fair fair <laughs> okay so one of them keep, kind of keeping on the theme um is poppy war okay. by rf quang mm-hmm. and the next one is and there's three of them there's three options perfect so poppy war the next one is I would really love to read Tress of the Emerald Sea. I have that one. I also want to read that. I do not have it, and this would give me an excuse to get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If it gets chosen. So Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. And for the third book, it is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. And that is the first book of a trilogy, actually. Yeah, and you were saying, like, before we recorded, that that one comes up in a lot of recommended lists, so. It does come up in a lot of, a lot of people's lists that I see on TikTok and all that. It's like, mm-hmm. fantasy series, you should read. This one comes up a lot. Yeah. Um, the It's the fifth season, and then underneath that it says, every age must come to an end. I feel like it's a bit apocalyptic. Mm. Um, anyway, but uh, yeah, Poppy War would kind of be on the same theme as the books we're reading right now sure. and um, Asian, Asian author. Um, yeah. I was hoping you would have a Venom Dark and Sweet, which is the sequel to this book, but that's okay. Oh, it's all good. well, you can have that to your <laughs> list. <laughs> I probably will. Cause I've got a feeling that this is going to end unresolved, oh. but we'll find out. Well, you know, I reserve the right to add a fourth book to my <laughs> list if this one ends in a crazy cliffhanger. <laughs> okay. Fair. Just saying that happens so with So maybe YAs. maybe there'll be four. <laughs> but right now it's three. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Okay, well, with that out of the way, don't forget you can join mm-hmm. our Patreon. Have voting rights. Yes. Um, okay. Indeed. So, chapters 25 through 31. Yeah. My overarching thought for this section was, where in the world is Kang? I know, He's in the first chapter. He's in chapter 25, which we got our first kiss. Mm Mm-hmm. Which was exciting. And then he was not in the chapter anymore. Or in the section anymore. Nope. And he never showed his face again. He does come up. um, Yeah, they talk about him. Yeah, but... He is not present. Yeah. Um, my overarching thoughts during this whole section was just, it was just a roller coaster in my head of like, okay, the princess is maybe good now. Mm. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I was so convinced that she was not a good guy. But now I'm like, maybe she is, but maybe she's not. I don't know, man. I'm still it's not so sure. It's so crazy. I'm still not sure because they reveal, like, we find out that the shadow 
quote unquote, that Ning keeps running into, like in her village and then also here, is actually Rui. Rui. Yeah. Um, the princess's bodyguard. Mm-hmm. So that's suspicious. And they're like, oh, she's research. She's trying to figure out where the poison came from. Squinty eyes. Can I trust mm. you? Yeah. It is sus. It I is suspicious for sure. I would like to be able to trust them. But I just don't know. Yeah. I want to trust them. Yeah. But it's hard to trust anyone unless you can give them some silver needle or whatever that was called. Mm-hmm. Or the golden key. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But so much, uh, so much more. It, it was a very princess centric. It was section. And also magic sure. centric. Because we had. Oh yeah. Like so, Ning before she's like on her way to visit the princess, but before she does that, she makes herself tea and like puts goji berries in it. And then she's got, like, extra spidey senses. <laughs> yeah, she's hyper alert. Yes. Um, and she accidentally, like, shoots herself out of her own body. And she's, yeah. like, watching from above. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty trippy. Um, and that's when she runs into Rui as the shadow, who's been severely mm-hmm. injured. Um, yeah. And then we get to see Ning as a physician... Um, Mm -hmm. she gets to use, like, her mother and her father's training to help save Rui, which is great. Mm -hmm. Um, do you want to talk more about that? Yes. The, uh, the whole, the whole healing process with Rui, because it, there's, there's a lot of drama that goes down with, Mm -hmm. um, Ning and the princess Mm -hmm. and Ning trying to use this as leverage, like, okay, uh, stop threatening my family, and maybe I'll save her life. That was pretty uh, t- <laughs> wild. Yeah, uh, tell me, tell me if he, are you the person that poisoned the tea? Is Rui behind yeah, it? Not very Hippocratic oath, so, <laughs> which of course does not exist in this world. No, not in this world. <laughs> um, but uh, no, she was basically like, "You're gonna do you have this healing all like this heal all stone stone? Nope." And the princess was like, if I had that, don't you think I would use it to save Ruyi in- instead of coming to mm-hmm. you? <laughs> or at least using you mm-hmm. to do it? But, uh, yeah, it was quite the tense uh, exchange. Um, Ning figures out that she's going to need help. They bring Leanne in also. Mm-hmm. And so she gets to be there to help and kind of strengthens Ruyi's body with her own abilities while Ning does the kind of medicinal healy part of it. But then we get to where um, Ning is actually doing the healing. Um, Oh, I also forgot to mention the princess apparently is kind of martially adept. Yeah. Um, She like knew, she knew how to disarm Ning and, Uh She's like new pressure points and stuff. So it's like she's definitely not uh, just a pretty princess. No. <laughs> that just she sits there and, and looks pretty. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, um, so when so when Ning starts doing the healing, there was a, a part. So she's like preparing the tea and the, the different ingredients that she'll need. Um, uh-huh. And she ends up putting this like bitter part of the medicine into her own mouth, which makes sense. Cause we yeah. previously, when we heard about the magic usage, it was like, you have to give like, there's a give and take. Right. So, which, which yeah. makes sense um, for Eastern practices. Um, mm-hmm. But I thought I, had, I wrote down this quote um, from chapter 28. It says the magic is not in the ceremony of pouring the tea or the sharing of the cup. It is in the connection, the brief joining of souls. The tea leaves are a channel, the ingredients, the signposts. And this is like right before she enters into almost a, I don't know. It kind of felt like the spirit world in Avatar, the last airbender. Did you kind of get that vibe? Yeah. Or like the world between yeah, worlds a bit. Um, that we see in like newer star Wars stuff. Where, like, Ning's spirit is interacting with a representation of Rui's body 
Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And she can, like, see the poison. Like, her body is translucent, and she can see the poison, like, where it's going in her body. It's mm-hmm. fascinating. Um, and I thought it was yeah, really sure. well written and very, um, it felt very visceral. Yes, the whole the whole section where she describes um, trying to remove the poison mm-hmm. from Ryi's body was really intense. Um, the poison trying to fight her and it like grows barbs. Yeah. Um, and it starts giving her welts on her hand where she tries to grab it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's like resisting and it, like it wants to kill Ruyi so bad, but then uh, even like the description, it was like with a sickening pop. Yeah. She she removed it from Ruyi's body, and I could just hear it in my mind, like Ugh. yeah, <laughs> it's so gross. And then we're and uh, then we're instantly back in like real world, and so I was expecting like to yeah. not have any. Like, when you snap back to the real world, you don't expect any of that, like, mysticism to follow. But, oh boy. Yeah. Does it follow? Um, that is not the case in this universe. <laughs> no. That's creepy. Um, the poison. <laughs> the poison. Well, first, she, like, it just, when she pulls the poison out, when she's still in the spirit world, she doesn't get snapped back right away. It, like, travels up her mm-hmm. arm and up her chest and into her mouth. Mm-hmm. And then she wakes right. up. So she ingests spits out the med- yeah, she spits out the medicine from her mouth, which I feel like the medicine like sucked in yeah. the poison, and then she spat it out, and then she sees like a, a a wispy, smoky snake come up from the lump of goo, and the snake like grows three heads. That are human. And it's this this terrifying aberration, which. Uh, the princess draws a sword on and cuts the three heads off and then it disappears. It's, uh, it's over then. But yeah, I also wasn't expecting And Okay. So I wasn't expecting the real world to have anything like that in it mm-hmm. necessarily. And I also wasn't expecting a physical strike with a sword to really do anything. <laughs> well, but it was like described it. as smoke but then, like, and the then it three had heads like become fell to the ground yeah. and like, thudded on the right. ground and then it disappeared so it was like it was a tangible thing that had yes. a mass like the heads thudded against the ground right so it was just very bizarre yeah. and scary <laughs> yeah which was fascinating um, to have that yeah. interaction before we got into like the details of the next challenge which was in like a couple chapters later mm-hmm. um which we'll get into more but it was interesting to have because usually we get the ceremony f- or like the um the challenge first and that explains like something that happens in the next few chapters but in this case i felt like this explanation of how poison works in this world and how it can be counteracted yeah it's kind of informing how the next challenge is going to go it's a little bit of a reversal there do you agree Mm -hmm. yeah it yeah they kind of turned Mm -hmm. the they flipped the narrative a little bit Mm -hmm. um between those two things and i think that kind of shows what's happening with their with leanne and ning's relationship with the princess before they were very much like outsiders they they were very reactive Mm -hmm. and now it's flipped to a more proactive Mm -hmm. like okay now we're like in the inner circle with the princess and the counselor and rui i suppose even though she's like on the mend um and now it's it's like they're in the inner circle now, and that narrative has flipped now, where now the thing that transpired is informing the uh, the challenge. So it's kind of just an interesting way to show the reader, mm-hmm. like it's it's an interesting way to show that that shift and that yeah. change. Um, skillful writing for sure. So yeah, um, very good. But uh, yeah, I think it's interesting that the challenge is poison related. I feel like maybe it wasn't before, but now it is. <laughs> Hard <laughs> like to say. I wonder if the princess if the princess was like, hmm, we're gonna do a challenge about this now. <laughs> so that uh, Yeah. Um yeah so it just seems like a big coincidence. <laughs> right. You know? Right. Um yeah so now Ning has had to reveal to Leanne basically all of her secrets. The only thing she keeps for herself is that kiss with Kang. Um, yeah. 
but she she tells Leanne everything else, um, which I think was safe. I I'm I'm feeling more secure in Leanne being a safe person. Yeah, gosh, I hope so. I know, <laughs> I know. I say that, and I'm this. Gonna jinx this it. <laughs> whole book is just a, a big list of gosh, I hope so. As far as like whether or not I can trust people, right? Like, I hope I can trust the princess. I hope I can trust Kang. I hope I can trust the chancellor. Well, at some you know, point, there's just, someone man. we can't trust. And who's it gonna be? Right. I have a feeling it won't be someone obvious. Which makes me worried about Leanne. It's small woo. <laughs> <laughs> All along. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. But uh, yeah, crazy. Uh, the new challenge with the poison and the birds. Yeah, crazy birds. Super, um, super poisonous birds. I'm confused about the birds. I'm also confused about the birds. Because, okay, okay. Let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you why I'm confused. Okay. They said that they would feed the birds poisonous animals their whole lives to make them not only able to tolerate mm -hmm. and be immune to poisons mm -hmm. but to make them incredibly poisonous as well um which we see later um but there so the challenge is though to make a poisonous tea that will kill the bird but you trick the bird into eating it right but it's like isn't the bird resistant to poison is this just a super po i mean they're using that weird golden silkworm thing uh -huh. right which is like I guess super poison. I guess I didn't realize or make the connection. Okay. Maybe you're confusing the silkworm and the bird. Because I know the silkworm, like when they're about to go into their chrysalis, they put them in a jar with a bunch of other poisonous creatures and then bury it so they can like ingest the blood of the poisonous creatures after they destroy each other. And that's um, how the silkworm becomes super poisonous. But my I, that was not my impression for the birds. I thought the birds just were super poisonous um, and had a no, good, they, like, they're... they were able to distinguish when something else was poisonous or not poisonous. No, they definitely had, I'll find it, they definitely had a, a section about how they make the birds because the birds aren't like that naturally. Okay. Um, that was, like, in the beginning of 20s. Seven or twenty-nine, eight or something. Twenty-nine. Oh. Okay, so behind me are the pia, the embodiment of the phrase "attack poison with poison." We train the birds from birth. They are continually fed a diet of poisonous creatures until they are both immune to poison and are poisonous themselves. Oh, okay. Um, blah blah blah. I assure you, they're real. I must have just their like bite claws. missed that one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> their bite, their bite, claws, tears, excrement all contain poison. Mm -hmm. They're also excellent poison detectors, for they will not ingest what they cannot endure. So, but I'm, I'm like, why? Okay, you made them super poisonous, but they're also immune to poisons to an extent. Mm -hmm. How they won't consume what they can't endure. Doesn't that make them a terrible poison detector? Because they're immune to a lot of poisons. So, like, they can eat a lot of stuff that's poisonous and not die. I think I don't think they mean, like, that it's they're a poison detector for them to utilize, like, as a cup, like, someone who would test for poison. But just, like, as their own beings, they're good at knowing their limits. I guess is how I read that. Because you're right. Okay. If okay. they, if you're immune to iocane powder, uh, you're not a good indicator of what's safe and what's not. <laughs> okay, so they themselves are good poison detectors, like for themselves mm -hmm. and for their own. Okay, I thought I thought they were talking about like using them to detect poison in other ways, and I'm like, that is no a terrible idea because they're immune to a lot of it. So like, you're gonna think that you're fine, <laughs> and then. Because the bird's fine, and then you're going to die because the bird's immune and you're not. Yeah, my guess is that they're okay. utilized as, um, like, poison machine, like, makers. Like, they're utilized as weapons, not as... Yeah, okay, yeah. Not as, a, not as detectors. Okay, thank you for helping walk me. Do you understand my confusion? Yes. Am I crazy? Yes, no, I, I understand. Okay, thank I, you. I totally get what you're saying. 
Thanks um, for validating me. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, I am confused how they're supposed to make a poison to make it eat the poison. Yeah, I think that's we have yet to see how they're going to do that mm -hmm. because they have to. I think the point of them using the gold silkworm is that that is poisonous enough to kill the bird mm -hmm. because that's like uber poisonous. They're both they're both on the level of urban legend where people didn't really know if these birds actually existed mm -hmm. and people didn't really know if these silkworms actually existed, mm -hmm. but they do. So I feel like. Um, they know the silkworms will kill the bird. Right. But it's just a matter of tricking the bird into eating it. Right. So, and then and also then healing making it the afterwards. Bird. Yeah. So it's, it's a test to see who amongst the Shinongshi are able to produce something so poisonous, but undetectable. And then mm -hmm. who can also heal that kind of poison. Yeah. So. Which the ability to to make a poison like that that is undetectable for the bird is suspicious. Like if if someone in this group is like really really good at that and like manages to do that easily, mm -hmm. that's going to I feel like throw a lot of suspicion on them for like the tea brick poisoner. Well, exactly. You know. That's what the princess is trying to do. She's trying to trick them. But then But it seems obvious. I'm just, I, yeah, but but then why the the other people in the competition that aren't as as good, like the the point is to try to find someone to become your Shinong Shi. Mm -hmm. If the person who is the the brick poisoner is really good at, they're going to be like really good at this challenge. Well, okay, so here's the other thing. And they're going to like, and they're not going to get disqualified. They're going to continue on, even though they're the okay. the brick poisoner. Right. So the Shinong Shi are not actually being tested. But they suspect that it's an existing Shinongshi or Shinongtu that are responsible for the poison tea bricks. So I don't know if this is... This particular challenge seems like it's their way of seeing who has maybe worked with this Shinongshi who would know how to deal with okay. this. Okay, yeah. But we find out from the princess and the chancellor that part of the reason they're having this set of challenges is so they could get all the Shinongshi in one place. Mm -hmm. Because they suspect one right. of them is the poisoner of the tea. Right. Yeah, which definitely, I feel like that revelation took some of the guilt off of Ning's shoulders. Yes. I mean, Kang did a really good job of talking her down, too. But, um, like, earlier in the first chapter of this section. Mm -hmm. But um, it's like, oh, there was, like, another malevolent force at work. Mm -hmm. Um And not, not just, like, ooh, I put arsenic in your tea. No, it's no. like... I put I put magical evil arsenic in your tea, <laughs> right. Right. which is like harder to detect. So, I think it just kind of speaks to Ning's innate abilities that she even saw any kind of suspicious mm -hmm. thing at all. Because, like Kang said, like your mom was a trained Shinongshi, and she didn't realize until she had already drank it. You know, right. so you shouldn't feel bad. Right. Like the person who poisoned it knew their stuff. Exactly. But, so I'm glad that she's taken some of the guilt off of her own shoulders for that yes. one. Yes. But now I'm wondering if even her ability to have seen that snake, that like snake smoke, whatever, mm. smoke snake is what I meant to say. Um, if it's just another indicator that she's got something extra going on. Yeah. And even after when they healed Ruyi, um, Leanne was like really shocked at her capabilities Mm -hmm. and was acting like Ning was way more powerful than Leanne gave her credit for. So I feel yeah. like, I think there's something else going on here. There's some kind of uh, super Shudongshu mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mojo going on here. Also, she said she saw the goddess in the dream yeah. world. Forgot to mention yes. that. But uh, what did she call yeah, her? Yeah, there's something else going on. She called her the um, Lady of the South. Yeah. But she has a name yeah. that Leanne knows her by. But yeah. She appeared as a crane. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. It's very beautiful. Yeah. Like the description mm -hmm. was very beautiful. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. 
But uh, yeah, we so we don't know the challenge hasn't happened yet. They they have to have this bird with them for a night, which <laughs> it felt like that dumb middle school assignment of like take, take, a, take this fake baby home <laughs> yeah. and <laughs> yeah. Except this is a super poisonous bird and it could kill you <laughs> with one little scratch of a, of a talon, mm-hmm. or um, if it spit in your eye, which is what it did to the dude, or if it poops on you. It tried to um. Yeah, so in the middle of the night, Ning wakes up to screaming, which turns out was the bird, um, yeah. because someone had broken into their room and tried to steal the bird. Yeah. And had died. And the bird messed him up real good. To death. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Um, and this is when the Chancellor comes in, and he's like, we need to talk. <laughs> yeah. uh, they kind of shuffle them out to a different room with the princess. Mm-hmm. Yay. And then and then that's when they all become in the princess's inner circle and, and then they both kind of swear oaths of allegiance to her in a way and then she tells them that she'll be honest with them too. I mean, and Leanne seems pretty earnest um, to yeah. do so. Ning is pretty hesitant, I think. She's like, yeah. More squinty eyes. <laughs> because... It even said in there, her internal dialogue was like, if only there's a way that I could know whether you would actually be a good ruler or not. Mm-hmm. And whether I'm, if I'm throwing in my lot with someone who is actually like has good intentions mm-hmm. or is a tyrant. Yeah. But not a lot of choice. I think she did what she needed. She did what she needed to do yes. in that moment. Yes. Um, and then it's revealed that they believe some of the poison in the tea came from the same region as Kang. Yeah, so now Ning feels very betrayed. Ning is Ning is she's also very quick to switch. I, it felt to me like yeah, yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. She, she was very quick to uh throw suspicion onto Kang knowing that one of the ingredients in the poison for the bricks is from the same region as him. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like he's the only dude that lives there mm-hmm. or the only, or like, like if you wanted to cast doubt, you're going to pick yeah. something from the region of the person who is maybe trying to take over the throne. Because like, what it seems too has kind of been, what has been the theme of the place Kang's from? I, I forget what it's called. It starts with an L. Um, it's there's... L-U-Z-H-O-U. I don't know how to. Yes. Um, the people there are heavily like demonized mm-hmm. and, and impoverished. That's where like all the, all the prisoners get sent there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's impoverished. They can't do what they would normally do for a living anymore. And the um, princess even made a comment that she wants to fix that, but the chancellor told her no. Because he was concerned for her safety. Right. He's mm, squinty suspicious. Eyes. <laughs> squinty eyes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's just, I, I feel like she switched. She, she kind of flipped on Kang pretty quick, mm-hmm. but you know, tensions and emotions are running high. <laughs> My suspicions are most heightened towards the chancellor at this point. Cause he seems too yeah. quick to have excuses. He was, he was chill. I thought that he was a good guy until mm-hmm. he was hesitant to let her go and try to fix things where Kang's from. Mm-hmm. And and then I was like, hmm. Yeah. That seems like something someone would do if they don't want the princess meddling in his affairs in a certain area. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it could be maybe the banished prince is up to no good and is kind of working with the chancellor mm-hmm. to try to overthrow the current government and take over. Like maybe that's a real thing. Maybe King's in the dark though, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, which Ning even says, and she even had in her, in her head, she remembered the golden key and like, he wasn't being dishonest with her at any, with anything that he said, mm-hmm. but she still feels betrayed. Yeah. And she still feels like he has lied by omission. Yeah. If anything. I think. And so it's just, yeah. I think the Chancellor has the most to gain. Mm. If there's 
a change in leadership. Interesting. I guess we'll see. We'll see. Let's see what happens. Yeah. So, for next week, you're going to read chapters 32 through 39. And of course, by next week, I mean next read-along, which is in two weeks. Yes. Next week will be a regular podcast episode. Yeah, 32 through 39. Cool. Very good. Well, I'm excited to see what happens next. Me too. More in, more intrigue. Mm-hmm. And don't forget. So, I guess. Go check out our Patreon. Oh, yes, to uh, get voting rights, mm-hmm. to vote for the next book that we read. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, anyway, I guess until next time, happy reading. And we'll talk to you next time. Later. Later.